The Swift Programming Language 5.6 Edition, book copyrighted by Apple and made available under the Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International License. Attributes. There are two kinds of attributes in Swift, those that apply to declarations and those that apply to types. An attribute provides additional information about the declaration or type. For example, the discardable result attribute on a function declaration indicates that Although the function returns a value, the compiler should not generate a warning if the return value is unused. You specify an attribute by writing the at symbol followed by the attribute's name and any arguments that the attribute accepts. Some declaration attributes accept arguments that specify more information about the attribute and how it applies to a particular declaration. These attribute arguments are enclosed in parentheses and their format is defined by the attribute that they belong to. Declaration attributes. You can apply a declaration attribute to declarations only. Available. Apply this attribute to indicate a declaration's life cycle relative to certain Swift language versions or certain platforms and operating system versions. The available attribute always appears with a list of two or more comma separated attribute arguments. These arguments begin with one of these platform or language names. You can use the asterisk to indicate the availability of the declaration on all of the platform names listed above. An available attribute that specifies availability using a Swift version number cannot use the asterisk. The remaining arguments can appear in any order and specify additional information about the declaration's life cycle, including important milestones. The unavailable argument indicates that the declaration is not available on the specified platform. This argument cannot be used when specifying Swift version availability. The introduced argument indicates the first version of the specified platform or language in which the declaration was introduced. It has the following form, introduced, colon, version number. The version number consists of one to three positive integers separated by periods. The deprecated argument indicates the first version of the specified platform or language in which the declaration was deprecated. It has the following form deprecated colon version number. The optional version number consists of one to three positive integers separated by periods. Omitting the version number indicates that the declaration is currently deprecated without giving any information about when the deprecation occurred. If you omit the version number, omit the colon as well. The obsoleted argument indicates the first version of the specified platform or language in which the declaration was obsoleted. When a declaration is obsoleted, it is removed from the specified platform or language and can no longer be used. It has this form, obsoleted colon version number. The version number consists of one to three positive integers separated by periods. The message argument provides a textual message that the compiler displays when emitting a warning or error about the use of a deprecated or obsoleted declaration. It has the following form, message colon message. The message consists of a string literal. The renamed argument provides a textual message that indicates the new name for a declaration that has been renamed. The compiler displays the new name when emitting an error about the use of a renamed declaration. It has this form, renamed colon new name. The new name consists of a string literal. You can apply the available attribute with the renamed and unavailable arguments to a type alias declaration as shown here to indicate that the name of a declaration changed between releases of a framework or library. This combination results in a compile time error that the declaration has been renamed. You can apply multiple available attributes on a single declaration to specify the declaration's availability on different platforms and different versions of Swift. The declaration that the available attribute applies to is ignored if the attribute specifies a platform or language version that does not match the current target. If you use multiple available attributes, the effective availability is the combination of the platform and Swift availabilities. If an available attribute only specifies an introduced argument in addition to a platform or language name argument, you can use this shorthand syntax instead. The shorthand syntax for available attributes concisely expresses availability for multiple platforms. Although the two forms are functionally equivalent, the shorthand form is preferred wherever possible. An available attribute that specifies availability using a Swift version number cannot additionally specify a declaration platform's availability. Instead, use separate available attributes to specify a Swift version availability and one or more platform availabilities. Discardable result. 
apply this attribute to a function or method declaration to suppress the compiler warning when the function or method that returns a value is called without using its result. Dynamic callable. Apply this attribute to a class, structure, enumeration, or protocol to treat instances of the type as callable functions. The type must implement either a dynamically call with arguments method or a dynamically call with keyword arguments method or both. You can call an instance of a dynamically callable type as if it's a function that takes any number of arguments. The declaration of the dynamically call with arguments method must have a single parameter that conforms to the expressible by array literal protocol, like the array of int in this example. The return type can be any type. You can include labels in a dynamic method call if you implement the dynamically call with keyword arguments method. The declaration of the dynamically call with keyword arguments method must have a single parameter that conforms to the expressible by dictionary literal protocol and the return type can be any type. The parameter's key must be expressible by string literal. The previous example uses key value pairs as the parameter type so that callers can include duplicate parameter labels. A and B appear multiple times in the call to repeat. If you implement both dynamically call methods, dynamically call with keyword arguments is called when the method call includes keyword arguments. In all other cases, dynamically call with arguments is called. You can only call the dynamically callable instance with arguments and a return value that match the types you specify in one of your dynamically call methods implementations. The call in this example does not compile because there is not an implementation of dynamically call with arguments that takes key value pairs of string to string. Dynamic member lookup. Apply this attribute to a class, structure, enumeration, or protocol to enable members to be looked up by name at runtime. The type must implement a subscript dynamic member subscript. In an explicit member expression, if there isn't a corresponding declaration for the named member, the expression is understood as a call to the type's subscript dynamic member subscript, passing information about the member as the argument. The subscript can accept a parameter that is either a key path or a member name. If you implement both subscripts, the subscript that takes key path argument is used. An implementation of subscript dynamic member can accept key paths using an argument type of key path, writable key path, or reference writable key path. It can accept member names using an argument of a type that conforms to the expressible by string literal protocol, in most cases string. The subscript's return type can be any type. Dynamic member lookup by member name can be used to create a wrapper type around data that cannot be type checked at compile time, such as when bridging data from other languages into Swift. Dynamic member lookup by key path can be used to implement a wrapper type in a way that supports compile time type checking. Frozen. Apply this attribute to a structure or enumeration declaration to restrict the kinds of changes you can make to the type. This attribute is allowed only when compiling in library evolution mode. Future versions of the library cannot change the declaration by adding, removing, or reordering an enumeration's cases or a structure's stored instance properties. These changes are allowed in non-frozen types, but they break ABI compatibility for frozen types. Note. When the compiler is not in library evolution mode, all structures and enumerations are implicitly frozen and this attribute is ignored. In library evolution mode, code that interacts with members of non-frozen structures and enumerations is compiled in a way that allows it to continue working without recompiling, even if a future version of the library adds, removes, or reorders some of that type's members. The compiler makes this possible using techniques like looking up information at runtime and adding a layer of indirection. Marking a structure or enumeration as frozen gives up this flexibility to gain performance. Future versions of the library can make only limited changes to the type, but the compiler can make additional optimizations in code that interacts with the type's members. Frozen types, the types of the stored properties of frozen structures, and the associated values of frozen enumeration cases must be public or marked with the usable from inline attribute. The properties of a frozen structure cannot have property observers, and expressions that provide the initial value for stored instance properties must follow the same restrictions as inlineable functions as discussed in inlineable.
To enable library evolution mode on the command line, pass the Enable Library Evolution option to the Swift compiler. To enable it in Xcode, set the Build Libraries for Distribution Build setting to Yes, as described in Xcode Help. A switch statement over a frozen enumeration does not require a default case, as discussed in Switching Over Future Enumeration Cases, including a default or at unknown default case when switching over a frozen enumeration produces a warning because that code is never executed. GK Inspectable. Apply this attribute to expose a custom gameplay kit component property to the sprite kit editor UI. Applying this attribute also implies the Objective C attribute. Inlineable. Apply this attribute to a function, method, computed property, subscript, convenience initializer, or deinitializer declaration to expose that declaration's implementation as part of the module's public interface. The compiler is allowed to replace calls to an inlineable symbol with a copy of the symbol's implementation at the call site. Inlineable code can interact with public symbols declared in any module, and it can interact with internal symbols declared in the same module that are marked with the usable from inline attribute. Inlineable code cannot interact with private or file private symbols. This attribute cannot be applied to declarations that are nested inside functions or to file private or private declarations. Functions and closures that are defined inside an inlineable function are implicitly inlineable, even though they cannot be marked with this attribute. Main. Apply this attribute to a structure, class, or enumeration declaration to indicate that it contains the top-level entry point for program flow. The type must provide a main type function that does not take any arguments and returns void. Here is an example. Another way to describe the requirements of the main attribute is that the type you write this attribute on must satisfy the same requirements as types that conform to this hypothetical protocol. The Swift code you compile to make an executable can contain at most one top-level entry point. Non-OBJC. Apply this attribute to a method, property, subscript, or initializer declaration to suppress an implicit Objective-C attribute. The non-Objective-C attribute tells the compiler to make the declaration unavailable in Objective-C code, even though it is possible to represent it in Objective-C. Applying this attribute to an extension that has the same effect as applying it to every member of that extension that is not explicitly marked with the OBJC attribute. You use the non-OBJC attribute to resolve circularity for bridging methods in a class marked with the OBJC attribute and to allow overloading of methods and initializers in a class marked with the OBJC attribute. A method marked with the non-Objective-C attribute cannot override a method marked with the Objective-C attribute. However, a method marked with the Objective-C attribute can override a method marked with the non-Objective-C attribute. Similarly, a method marked with the non-Objective-C attribute cannot satisfy a protocol requirement for a method marked with the Objective-C attribute. NS application main. Apply this attribute to a class to indicate that it is the application delegate. Using this attribute is equivalent to calling the NS application main function. If you do not use this attribute, supply a main.swift file with code at the top level that calls the NS application main function as shown here. The Swift code you compile to make an executable can contain at most one top level entry point. NS copying. Apply this method to a stored variable property of a class. This attribute causes the property's setter to be synthesized with a copy of the property's value returned by the copy with zone method instead of the value of the property itself. The type of the property must conform to the NS copying protocol. The NS copying attribute behaves in a way similar to the Objective-C copy property attribute. NS managed. Apply this attribute to an instance method or stored variable property of a class that inherits from NS managed object to indicate that core data dynamically provides its implementation at runtime based on the associated entity description. For a property marked with the NS managed attribute, core data also provides the storage at runtime. Applying this attribute also implies the OBJC attribute. OBJC. Apply this attribute to any declaration that can be represented in Objective-C. For example, non-nested classes, protocols, non-generic enumerations, constrained to integer raw value types, properties and methods, including getters and setters, of classes, 
protocols and optional members of a protocol, initializers, and subscripts. The Objective-C attribute tells the compiler that a declaration is available to use in Objective-C code. Applying this attribute to an extension has the same effect as applying it to every member of that extension that is not explicitly marked with the non-OBJC attribute. The compiler implicitly adds the OBJC attribute to subclasses of any class defined in Objective-C. However, the subclass must not be generic and must not inherit from any generic classes. You can explicitly add the OBJC attribute to a subclass that meets these criteria to specify its Objective-C name as discussed below. Protocols that are marked with the OBJC attribute cannot inherit from protocols that aren't marked with this attribute. The OBJC attribute is also implicitly added in the following cases. 1. The declaration is an override in a subclass and the superclass's declaration has the OBJC attribute. Two. The declaration satisfies a requirement from a protocol that has the OBJC attribute. 3. The declaration has the IB action, IB segue action, IB outlet, IB designable, IB inspectable, NS managed, or GK inspectable attribute. If you apply the OBJC attribute to an enumeration, each enumeration case is exposed to Objective-C code as a concatenation of the enumeration name and its case name. The first letter of the case name is capitalized. For example, a case named Venus in a Swift Planet enumeration is exposed to Objective-C code as a case named Planet Venus. The OBJC attribute optionally accepts a single attribute argument which consists of an identifier. The identifier specifies the name to be exposed to Objective-C for the entity that the OBJC attribute applies to. You can use this argument to name classes, enumerations, enumeration cases, protocols, methods, getters, setters, and initializers. If you specify the object of C name for a class, protocol, or enumeration, include a three-letter prefix on the name as described in Conventions in Programming with Object of C. The example here exposes the getter for the enabled property of the example class to object of C code as is enabled rather than just as the name for the property itself. For more information, see Importing Swift into Objective-C. Note, the argument to the OBJC attribute can also change the runtime name for that declaration. You use the runtime name when calling functions that interact with the Objective-C runtime, like NS class from string, and when specifying class names in an app's info.p list file. If you specify a name by passing an argument, that name is used as the name in Objective-C code and as the runtime name. If you omit the argument, the name used in Objective-C code matches the name in Swift code and the runtime name follows the normal Swift compiler convention of name mangling. OBJC members. Apply this attribute to a class declaration to implicitly apply the OBJC attribute to all Objective-C compatible members of the class, its extensions, its subclasses, and all of the extensions of its subclasses. Most code should use the OBJC attribute instead to expose only the declarations that are needed. If you need to expose many declarations, you can group them in an extension that has the OBJC attribute. The OBJC members attribute is a convenience for libraries that make heavy use of the introspection facilities of the Objective-C runtime. Applying the OBJC attribute when it is not needed can increase your binary size and adversely affect performance. Property wrapper. Apply this attribute to a class, structure, or enumeration declaration to use that type as a property wrapper. When you apply this attribute to a type, you create a custom attribute with the same name as the type. Apply that new attribute to a property of a class, structure, or enumeration to wrap access to the property through an instance of the wrapper type. Apply the attribute to a local stored variable declaration to wrap access to the variable the same way. Computed variables, global variables, and constants cannot use property wrappers. The wrapper must define a wrapped value instance property. The wrapped value of the property is the value that the getter and setter for this property expose. In most cases, wrapped value is a computed value, but it can be stored value instead. The wrapper defines and manages any underlying storage needed by its wrapped value. The compiler synthesizes storage for the instance of the wrapper type by prefixing the name of the wrapped property with an underscore. For example, the wrapper for some property is stored as underscore some property. The synthesized storage for the wrapper has an access control level of private. 
A property that has a property wrapper can include will set and did set blocks, but it cannot override the compiler synthesized get or set blocks. Swift provides two forms of syntactic sugar for initialization of a property wrapper. You can use assignment syntax in the definition of a wrapped value to pass the expression on the right hand side of the assignment as the argument to the wrapped value parameter of the properties wrappers initializer. You can also provide arguments to the attribute when you apply it to a property and those arguments are passed to the property wrappers initializer. For example, in this code, SumStruct calls each of the initializers that SumWrapper defines. The projected value for a wrapped property is a second value that a property wrapper can use to expose additional functionality. The author of a property wrapper type is responsible for determining the meaning of its projected value and defining the interface that the projected value exposes. To project a value from a property wrapper, define a projected value instance property on the wrapper type. The compiler synthesizes an identifier for the projected value by prefixing the name of the wrapped property with a dollar sign. For example, the projected value for some property is dollar some property. The projected value has the same access control level as the original wrapped property. Result Builder. Apply this attribute to a class, structure, or enumeration to use that type as a result builder. A result builder is a type that builds a nested data structure step by step. You use result builders to implement a domain-specific language, DSL, for creating nested data structures in a natural declarative way. For an example of how to use the result builder attribute, see Result Builders. Result Building Methods A result builder implements static methods described below. Because all of the result builder's functionality is exposed through static methods, you do not ever initialize an instance of that type. The build block method is required. The other methods, which enable additional functionality in the DSL, are optional. The declaration of a result builder type does not actually have to include any protocol conformance. The result building methods are as follows. Build block combines an array of partial results into a single partial result. A result builder must implement this method. Build optional builds a partial result from a partial result that can be nil. Implement this method to support if statements that do not include an else clause. Build either first. This builds a partial result whose value varies depending on some condition. Implement both this method and build either second to support switch statements and if statements that include an else clause. Build array builds a partial result from an array of partial results. Implement this method to support for loops. Build expression builds a partial result from an expression. You can implement this method to perform pre-processing. For example, converting expressions to an internal type or to provide additional information for type inference at use sites. Build final result. This builds a final result from a partial result. You can implement this method as part of a result builder that uses a different type for partial and final results or to perform other post-processing on a result before returning it. Build limited availability. Builds a partial result that propagates or erases type information outside a compiler control statement that performs an, av an availability check. You can use this to erase type information that varies between the conditional branches. This code defines a simple result builder that builds an array of integers. This code defines component and expression as type aliases to make it easier to match these examples to the list of methods above. Result transformations. The following syntactic transformations are applied recursively to turn code that uses result builder syntax into code that calls the static methods of the result builder type. If a result builder has a build expression method, each expression becomes a call to that method. This transformation is always first. For example, the following declarations are equivalent. An assignment a statement is transformed like in an expression, but is understood to evaluate to void. You can define an overload of build expression that takes an argument of type void to handle assignments specifically. A branch statement that checks an availability condition becomes a call to the build limited availability method. This transformation happens before the transformation into a call to build either first, build either second, or build optional. 
you use the build limited availability method to erase type information that changes depending on which branch is taken. For example, the build either first and build either second methods shown here use a generic type that captures type information about both branches. However, this approach causes a problem in code that has availability checks. In this code, future text appears as part of the type of broken drawing because it is one of the types in the draw either generic type. This could cause your program to crash if future text is not available at runtime, even in the case where that type is explicitly not being used. To solve this problem, implement a build limited availability method to erase type information. For example, this code builds an any drawable value from its availability check. A branch statement becomes a series of nested calls to the build either first and build either second methods. The statement's conditions and cases are mapped onto the leaf nodes of a binary tree and the statement becomes a nested call to the build either methods following the path to that leaf node from the root node. For example, if you write a switch statement that has three cases, the compiler uses a binary tree with three leaf nodes. Likewise, because the path from the root node to the second case is second child and then first child, that case becomes a nested call like build either first, build either second. These two declarations are equivalent. A branch statement that might not produce a value, like an if statement without an else clause, becomes a call to build optional. If the if statement's condition is satisfied, its code block is transformed and passed as the argument. Otherwise, build optional is called with nil as its argument. For example, these two declarations are equivalent. A code block or do statement becomes a call to the build block method. Each of the statements inside the block are transformed one at a time and they become the arguments to the build block method. For example, these two declarations are equivalent. A for loop becomes a temporary variable, a for loop, and call to the build array method. The new for loop iterates over the sequence and appends each partial result to the array. The temporary array is passed as the argument in the build array call. For example, these two declarations are equivalent. If the result builder has a build final result method, the final result becomes a call to that method. This transformation is always last. Although the transformation behavior is described in terms of temporary variables, using a result builder does not actually create any new declarations that are visible from the rest of your code. You cannot use break, continue, defer, guard, or return statements, while statements, or do catch statements in the code that a result builder transforms. The transformation process does not change declarations in the code, which lets you use temporary constants and variables to build up expressions piece by piece. It also does not change throw statements, compile time diagnostic statements, or closures that contain a return statement. Whenever possible, transformations are coalesced. For example, the expression 4 plus 5 times 6 becomes build expression 4 plus 5 times 6 rather than multiple calls to that function. Likewise, nested branch statements become a single binary tree of calls to the build either methods. Custom result builder attributes. Creating a result builder type creates a custom attribute with the same name. You can apply that attribute in the following places. On a function declaration, the result builder builds the body of the function. On a variable or subscript declaration that includes a getter, the result builder builds the body of the getter. On a parameter in a function declaration, the result builder builds the body of a closure that is passed as the corresponding argument. Applying a result builder attribute does not impact ABI compatibility. Applying a result builder attribute to a parameter makes that attribute part of the function's interface, which can affect source compatibility. Requires stored property inits. Apply this attribute to a class declaration to require all stored properties within the class to provide default values as part of their definitions. This attribute is inferred for any class that inherits from NSManagedObject. Testable. 
apply this attribute to an import declaration to import that module with changes to its access control that simplify testing the module's code. Entities in the imported module that are marked with the internal access level modifier are imported as if they were declared with the public access level modifier. Classes and class members that are marked with the internal or public access level modifier are imported as if they were declared with the open access level modifier. The imported module must be compiled with testing enabled. UI application main. Apply this attribute to a class to indicate that it is the application delegate. Using this attribute is equivalent to calling the UI application main function and passing this class's name as the name of the delegate class. If you do not use this attribute, supply a main.swift file with code at the top level that calls the UI application main function. For example, if your app uses a custom subclass of UI application as its principal class, call the UI application main function instead of using this attribute. The Swift code you compile to make an executable can contain at most one top level entry point. Usable from inline. Apply this attribute to a function, method, computed property, subscript, initializer, or deinitializer declaration to allow that symbol to be used in inlineable code that is defined in the same module as the declaration. The declaration must have the internal access level modifier. A structure or class marked usable from inline can use only types that are public or usable from inline for its properties. An enumeration marked usable from inline can use only types that are public or usable from inline for the raw values and associated values of its cases. Like the public access level modifier, this attribute exposes the declaration as part of the module's public interface. Unlike public, the compiler does not allow declarations marked with usable from inline to be referenced by name in code outside the module, even though the declaration symbol is exported. However, Code outside the module might still be able to interact with the declaration symbol by using runtime behavior. Declarations marked with the inlineable attribute are implicitly usable from inlineable code. Although either inlineable or usable from inline can be applied to internal declarations, applying both attributes is an error. Warn unqualified access. Apply this attribute to a top level function, instance method, or class or static method to trigger warnings when that function or method is used without a preceding qualifier, such as a module name, type name, or instance variable or constant. Use this attribute to help discourage ambiguity between functions with the same name that are accessible from the same scope. For example, the Swift standard library includes both a top-level min function and a min function for sequences with comparable elements. The sequence method is declared with the warn unqualified access attribute to help reduce confusion when attempting to use one or the other from within a sequence extension. Declaration attributes used by Interface Builder. Interface Builder attributes are declaration attributes used by Interface Builder to synchronize with Xcode. Swift provides the following Interface Builder attributes, IB Action, IB Segue Action, IB Outlet, IB Designable, and IB Inspectable. These attributes are conceptually the same as their Objective-C counterparts. You apply the IB Outlet and IB Inspectable attributes to property declarations of a class. You apply the IB Action and IB Segue Action attribute to method declarations of a class and the IB Designable attribute to class declarations. Applying the IB Action, IB Segue Action, IB Outlet, IB Designable, or IB Inspectable attribute also implies the OBJC attribute. Type Attributes. You can apply type attributes to types only. Auto Closure. Apply this attribute to delay the evaluation of an expression by automatically wrapping that expression in a closure with no arguments. You apply it to a parameter's type in a function or method declaration for a parameter whose type is a function type that takes no arguments and that returns a value of the type of the expression. For an example of how to use the autoclosure attribute, see autoclosures and function type. Convention. Apply this attribute to the type of a function to indicate its calling conventions. The convention attribute always appears with one of the following arguments. The Swift argument indicates a Swift function reference. This is the standard calling convention for function values in Swift. 
The block argument indicates an object of C compatible block reference. The function value is represented as a reference to the block object, which is an ID compatible object of C object that embeds its invocation function within the object. The invocation function uses the C calling convention. The C argument indicates a C function reference. The function value carries no context and uses the C calling convention. With a few exceptions, a function of any calling convention can be used when a function any other calling convention is needed. A non-generic global function, a local function that does not capture any local variables, or a closure that doesn't capture any local variables can be converted to the C calling convention. Other Swift functions cannot be converted to the C calling convention. A function with the object of C block calling convention cannot be converted to the C calling convention. Escaping. Apply this attribute to a parameter's type in a function or method declaration to indicate that the parameter's value can be stored for later execution. This means that the value is allowed to outlive the lifetime of the call. Function type parameters with the escaping type attribute require explicit use of self dot for properties or methods. For an example of how to use the escaping attribute, see escaping closures. Switch case attributes. You can apply switch case attributes to switch cases only. Unknown. Apply this attribute to a switch case to indicate that it is not expected to be matched by any case of the enumeration that is known at the time the code is compiled. For an example of how to use the unknown attribute, see switching over future enumeration cases.